Hello and welcome to the latest Epic Universe construction update. Things have quieted down a bit since Universal made their announcements a few weeks ago regarding things coming to Epic Universe, but there's plenty of things to take a look at when it comes to the Epic Universe construction. So today we're gonna take a look over at some major progress in Super Nintendo World, the Wizarding World Ministry of Magic, and much more. Now, before we go on, if you're unaware, Epic Universe is a brand new theme park coming to Universal Studios Florida and is currently set to open in 2025. Now, Epic Universe is located just two miles south of Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure in Orlando, Florida, and this new park will include brand new lands themed to How to Train Your Dragon, the Wizarding World Ministry of Magic, Universal Monsters, Dark Universe, and my personal favorite, Super Nintendo World. So let's kick off today's Epic Universe construction update by heading over into the Dark Universe. Now in the Dark Universe, we can see over at the land's entrance portal that we have some gravestones that are arranged as a wall that line the walking path into the land past a crypt. And in this angle, we can still see the gravestones and entrance path, but at the top, we can see the exit from the land is making some progress. And over in the village in the dark universe, scaffolding has been recently removed from the broken walls. Now there are a few broken walls in this land and this one is the one toward the back of the land. But we can assume that they will all look in a very similar way to this one. And over at the dark manor, we can see the progress of the stone walls and the ramp that leads into this attraction. And if you're unaware of this attraction, this is going to be a Kuka arm based attraction, which if you wanna know what that looks like, you can check out this video. And you can also think about over in the Wizarding World in Hogsmeade at the Forbidden Journey ride as that ride uses a Kuka arm based system as well. And here's a great shot of the overall progress on the dark manor. Now we can see some new framing at the top of the building and on top of the steeple for what will be further theming elements. And by taking a look at the concept art for the Dark Manor, we can get an idea of what this framing is for and what it will look like once it's completed. Now going to the left of the Dark Manor, we have a look at the extended queue area. Now there has been a lot of work in this area since our last update with lots of concrete walkways poured and the crypt has made some solid progress on it as well and it probably is very close to being completed. Now one thing we can see since our last update is the sheer amount of trees that have been planted in this area. Now this is not a surprise as Universal has stated multiple times that they plan to quote, put the park back into theme parks and plan on having lots of trees, lots of greenery. So we will see much more trees in this update and future updates, I'm sure. Now we've seen this small building next to the Dark Manor in the past few updates and slowly each update we see more and more progress. And again, it has made a lot of progress since our last update. And we can also see walkways are being poured all throughout the park, but we can actually see one right here as a worker is bringing a wheelbarrow of concrete over to pour in front of the building. And over at the Curse of the Werewolf roller coaster, we can see the main building looks like it may just be completed with its theming. It also seems that more trees have been planted over here as well and we were also able to see the ride train in action as this ride is going through active ride testing. And in the queue area of the Curse of the Werewolf roller coaster, we can see the walkways are all defined and seemingly have plywood covering them. Now these walkways will probably get concrete pours in the near future, and it looks like even more trees have been planted in this area as well. And rounding out our tour of the Dark Universe, we can see the progress on the Burning Blade Tavern, and as is the theme with a lot of this land, there are more trees planted in this area, and we can see the walkways are likely prepping for concrete pours over here. Now we talked in the past updates that there was land that was being cleared behind the Burning Bleed Tavern for a likely service building. And here we can see some solid progress on the service building that we thought would be built here. Well, that's it for the Dark Universe. So let's head over to the Wizarding World Ministry of Magic to check out the progress over here in this land. Now the entrance portal of the Wizarding World is becoming a busy place. As we can see in the foreground, a restaurant is being built and going up quickly. And again, more trees have been placed and the entrance walkways are still being worked on. And looking at the other side of the view we just had, we can see what looks like a concrete pour for a main element of the walkway is being prepped and perhaps something is being built on the outside of the restaurant that is in front of the portal. It could be some sort of theming element to have it blend into this area a bit more, but we'll have to wait and see what this ends up being. And here is a copy of 
I'm pretty sure I nailed it now. Here we go again. Port Saint Denis. I'm proud of you, you know that. That we have seen in many of the previous updates and the artwork to the right that is likely a 1930s era ad doesn't seem to have much progress on it since our last update. Now, if you're unfamiliar, this land is based off of the Harry Potter Fantastic Beasts movies. So this land is going to be built to a replica of the streets of Paris in the 1930s. And here we can see an intersection of four streets and how much of the scaffolding has been removed since our last few updates to get a glimpse of what this land will look like. And here we can see there are graphics being painted on the side of a building here. It seems that the wording on this building here, and I'm not gonna try and pronounce it because I just have been able to say Port Saint Denis. Quit while you're ahead. But if you look up the translation of this, it reads dental renovation. So. Either it's just part of theming or guests can have dental work done while they're in the park. Kill two birds with one stone. And here's another building where scaffolding was recently removed and we can see some of the painted graphics to the left. And here at the arrow, we can see one of the three alleys into an inner courtyard. And in that courtyard, we know there will be a restaurant and probably other things for guests to check out on top of that. And at the top, we can see workers installing a window from a crane. And here in this kind of unique view, we can see at one, scaffolding being removed. At two is a service stairway and at three is the inner courtyard of the land and access to the featured restaurant we just mentioned toward the back of the land and at the end of a main street we can see at the monument which i actually believe is going to be part of the flu network if i were to guess there are stone details currently being worked on and in this shot we can see at the arrow what very well could be the entrance to the Ministry of Magic right in this land, as it's a little bit of a wider opening and the building has different decorative features on it compared to everything else around it. And here in these photos, we can take a slight tour of some of the recent scaffolding has been removed and what some of the buildings are starting to look like all over the land. Now, there isn't much else to check out over here in the Wizarding World, but it is nice to see a lot more scaffolding coming down and we're able to see some building details come out. And I'm sure some keen eyes will point out and explain certain Easter eggs that are probably all over this land. All right, that's gonna do it over here in the Wizarding World. So let's head over to the land I'm most personally excited for, Super Nintendo World, to check out the progress over here. Now over at Mount Beanpole, we can see some very exciting details showing up, including a thwomp, that is the angry stone face you see right there, a red switch box, a pow block, clouds, and a Mario flag at the top of the pole. And in this side view, we can also see some climbing fences that many Nintendo players will be very familiar with. And at Yoshi's Adventure, we see ride testing is still going on as we can see the temporary fencing along the track and each car has its own protective coverings that are on with test dummies still in them. And here we can also see over at Yoshi's Adventure at one, a frame for a moving element. At two is a gate hiding some access of the ride service areas and three is frames for some additional theming. And here we can see that there is more work happening for some more frames being installed over at Yoshi's Adventure. Now in this view, we can see at the left is a couple of pyramids and one that is currently in the framing process. Now again, if you've played the Mario games over the years, you'll be very familiar with these. Also, I'm just very curious about this crane that is in the middle of the Mushroom Kingdom in many of these shots. How did it get in there? And how are they gonna get it out? It's science. Now I'm sure for those in the construction world, this is probably not a mystery, but when I was going through the photos here, I just kept seeing this crane that literally looks like it just was placed in there. But again, it's probably a simple explanation. If you know, please let me know in the comments. At the entrance portal, things are shaping up with the landscaping and finishing framing element being worked on. Now this land is unique as when guests enter Super Nintendo World, they will actually go up an escalator that will then take them into Peach's Castle and from there guests will enter the land. And right outside the entrance portal, we can get a look at the progress of the Nintendo Superstar Store that will set just outside the land. Now the reason this shop and a pizza restaurant will be outside the land is so that if the land is closed for capacity or is being rented out for a private event, guests can still have access to Nintendo themed food items and merchandise, lots and lots of merchandise, which I'm here for. Over at Peach's Castle, the exterior work is progressing and the area outside of the castle is bustling with workers, equipment, and materials. Now, one of the main things that you're seeing them work on is placing the electrical wiring that will be covered probably in foam or some sort of protective material and then concrete poured over the top of it. And over at Bowser's Fortress, which is the entrance to the Mario Kart attraction, is under scaffolding and its exterior work is well underway 
progressing a bit quicker than Peach's Castle. Now jumping over into the Donkey Kong Country portion of Super Nintendo World, we can see that the broken wall element is having more exterior detail work being done on it. Now we can see some themed reinforcements that are being added to this turn here on Minecart Madness. And here is a great view of how this ride will work as the ride is meant to give the illusion of jumping over broken elements in the track like in the Donkey Kong Country video game. But in reality, the mine carts will always be attached to a side track that guests just will not be able to see to give the illusion of jumping over these elements in the track. And over at the splashdown part of the ride, here is the status of the rock work being sculpted. Now there are tarps down to protect the track with concrete and other work going on around it. And we can see in this angle, workers are working on the concrete actively and toward the bottom, we do have some painted elements of the rock work completed. And there is a recently added foundation near Minecart Madness. Now at first, I thought this could be for Funky Kong's plane that is gonna be in this land, but it's not in the right place for it when we look at the concept art. So I'm not really sure what this is gonna be used for. We'll have to wait and see in further updates. Well, that's gonna do it over here for Super Nintendo World. I'm very excited to see all the progress on Mount Beanpole, seeing Thwomp in there, seeing all the brick elements. I absolutely love it. Very excited for what's done and what's gonna to continue to come here. But let's head over to the How to Train Your Dragon Land Isle of Burke to see the progress over here. Now over at the entrance portal to the land, there has been a lot of progress on the rock work and the boardwalk on the bay looks like much of its work is probably completed. We can also see one of the Viking ships on the left has painting starting on it. And here are some good views of when the How to Train Your Dragon coaster dips under the bridge to give the illusion of going underwater. And yet again, as the trends you will notice with this all over the park, we can find more trees that have been recently planted here. And in a tight turn on the How to Train Your Dragon coaster, we can see on a rock there are now sheep and a small dragon that has been perched up there. And over on the first launch of the coaster, we can see the status of the building here. Now there is more work to be done here, but it's definitely come along nicely and steadily every single update. Zooming out a little bit, we can see all the trees that have been placed in this area and get a look at the main coaster station as work on it is continuing. Now there's some scaffolding on the coaster that is near the spinning dragon ride. Now it's believed that these will be themed grandstands on both sides of the track like in the movies where they would watch dragon races. And speaking of these spinning dragons, there isn't much to update about this, but here's the current view of the work in this area. And over at the second launch of the coaster, we can see the progress on the rock work that is part of the kids play area over here. At the Spitfire Grill that will sit near the front of the land, we can see detail work is well underway with painting of the rock work on the left and some detail work has started on the signage to the right. Now, if you've ever wondered how they get the rock work theming to look the way that it does, you can see here at the arrow, there is a theming model that the workers use as a reference while they're painting. And there's lots of rock work still ongoing on multiple buildings, including Mead Hall, where we can see it looks like it is ready for paint and detail work just about. And over at the boat ride in the land that is likely to be called Fire Drill, the dark flooring is new and theming elements with moss have made progress as well. Well, that's gonna do it for the How to Train Your Dragon Land Isle of Burke, but let's head over into Celestial Park, which is the center of Epic Universe, and check out the progress over here. Over at Starfall Racers, there is some progress on the main theming element that is a comet, and we can see there has been some good progress on the bottom area, where from what it looks like in the concept art and video that Universal released, this area will be covered in a fog or mist. We can also see on the other side of the theming element that some of the rock work here has begun to get painted. We can also see there is work still happening on the roof and now we have the green tarp completely covering the roof again. As last update, there were some white tarps looking like they were being installed. So I'm imagining there will still be work in terms of a completed rooftop here, but it, for now, we just have more tarps. Heading further into Celestial Park, we can see some equipment being installed in the giant fountain that will sit just outside of the Helios Grand Hotel. At the fountain, we can see there is a new frame that has been recently added, which many of you have commented that these are going to be guest relation kiosks. Now, there hasn't been any confirmation from Universal or anything that I can find that this is what they are, but it does make sense that this is what they would be for, as we are seeing these all throughout the park. The fountain is also encircled with a new ring of concrete that is gonna be poured here as well. 
Now over near the Dark Universe entrance portal in the Blue Dragon restaurant, there is a new project underway here. And also over outside of the How to Train Your Dragon Land, there is another project here that has started construction. Now the last time we were over at Celestial Carousel, there was a lot of activity going on, but we couldn't see a lot of work or progress currently being made in the last update. Well, this time around, there is a lot of activity going on, but a lot of progress has been made on this attraction as well. We can also see that the work has started on the actual carousel portion of the ride on the inside of the dome. As we can see, the floor is looking like what we saw in the concept art the Universal released. And at the right are concrete forms for the entrance and exit. And here is a close up view of the floor of Celestial Carousel and the inner circles will spin within the rotating deck itself. And next to the carousel will be water features and the gray line in this shot is for a curved line of fountains in the pond near it. You can also see the splash pad to the right here, which is called Astronomica, which is where you can play with dancing fountains. On the dome itself, we still only have one panel that has been installed, but I'm guessing that will be changing in the coming weeks as progress on this seems to be picking up quite a bit. And over at the Atlantic restaurant, we can't see much in the way of the restaurant itself, but what we can see is that landscaping around the water features has started with trees, shrubs, and more over here, including some recent concrete pours. And over at the entrance portal to Epic Universe, which will be called the Kronos, there isn't much to update here since our last visit. And here we can get a look at the overall entrance plaza to get a view of how this is shaping up. Now, before we end our tour today, let's go check out the hotels that are being built in and around Epic Universe. First, let's check out the pair of hotels that will sit just outside the park called Terra Luna and Stella Nova Resorts. Now, there isn't really a ton of progress to update on here as it seems the reflective tiles being installed on the buildings has slowed down a bit as we don't see really much progress here but we can see some progress on the pool area at the Terra Luna Resort right here and also some progress on the pool area here at the Stella Nova Resort. And over at the in-park hotel called the Helios Grand Hotel, we can see progress on the pool and bar area here. And at the arrow is showing a recently added structure in the resort transportation area. And on Helios itself, there really isn't much else to note since our last update, as a lot of the work is probably happening on the inside but here's an overall view of what we can see right now. Well, that is gonna do it for this Epic Universe construction update. If you enjoyed this video, please leave us a like and subscribe to the channel before you go. And as always, we will be doing more Epic Universe construction updates, land previews, news updates, and more as work on this new part continues. And also here at Capture the Magic, we have informational videos to help you have the best time when you're on your vacation either to Universal Studios Orlando or Walt Disney World. And if you want even more Universal Studios and Disney World information, you can check out the Capture the Magic podcast where we share tips, reviews, money-saving strategies, and more. You can find the podcast wherever you listen to podcasts and also here on YouTube over at CTM Podcast. So I'm curious, are you planning to delay a trip to Universal Studios until Epic Universe is built or are you still looking to go to Universal Studios now and also after Epic Universe opens? Let us know in the comments and until next time, we will see you in the parks.